Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Archaeologists discover remains of Egyptian army from the Biblical Exodus in Red Sea. Egypt's Antiquities Ministry announced this morning that a team of underwater archaeologists had discovered that remains of a large Egyptian army from the 14th century BC, at the bottom of the Gulf of Suez, 1.5 kilometers offshore from the modern city of Ras Garib. The team was searching for the remains of ancient ships and artifacts related to Stone Age and Bronze Age trade in the Red Sea area, when they stumbled upon a gigantic mass of human bones darkened by age. The scientists lead by Professor Abdul Muhammad Gader and associated with Cairo University's Faculty of Archaeology, have already recovered a total of more than 400 different skeletons, as well as hundreds of weapons and pieces of armor, also the remains of two war chariots, scattered over an area of approximately 200 square meters. They estimate that more than 5,000 other bodies could be dispersed over a wider area, suggesting that an army of large size who have perished on the site. This magnificent blade from an Egyptian kopish was certainly the weapon of an important character. It was discovered near the remains of a richly decorated war chariot, suggesting it could have belonged to a prince or nobleman. Many clues on the site have brought Professor Gator and his team to conclude that the bodies could be linked to the famous episode of the Exodus. First of all, the ancient soldiers seem to have died on dry ground, since no traces of boats or ships have been found in the area the positions of the bodies, and the fact that they were stuck in a vast quantity of clay and rock, implied that they could have died in a mudslide or a tidal wave. The sheer number of bodies suggests that a large ancient army perished on the site, and the dramatic way by which they were killed, both seem to corroborate the biblical version of the Red Sea crossing, when the army of the Egyptian pharaoh was destroyed by the returning waters that Moses had parted. This new find certainly proves that there was indeed an Egyptian army of large size that was destroyed by the waters of the Red Sea during the reign of King Akhenaten. For centuries, the famous biblical account of the Red Sea crossing was dismissed by most scholars and historians as more symbolic than historical. This astounding discovery brings undeniable scientific proof that one of the most famous episodes of the Old Testament was, indeed, based on an historical event, Professor Gator said during the press conference. It brings a brand new perspective on a story that many historians have been considering for years as a work of fiction, and suggesting that other themes like the plagues of Egypt could indeed have an historical base. A lot more research and many more recovery operations are to be expected on the site over the next few years, as Professor Gator and his team have already announced their desire to retrieve the rest of the bodies and artifacts from what has turned out to be one of the richest archaeological underwater sites ever discovered. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update and watch to the end to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. You are the product. Your personal data are sold to brokers and advertisers against your informed consent to profit the uber rich, like Facebook's co-founder, MZ. But it gets worse. Much worse. Your very reputation as a human is built or demolished on social media as it is sold to prospective employees, lenders, and landlords. 
so-called social media, which are really anti-social media, are merging into the tech pharma industrial complex. They are creating a biofascist system, in which your body and behavior are potential moneymakers for tech monopolies. The artificial intelligence economy is morphing into the Internet of Bodies, where genetic engineers and for-profit health companies will acquire all pervasive ubiquitous data about your most personal information. Not only this, but anticipatory artificial intelligence markets are under development. Grim Future and Present in these future markets, the omnipresent surveillance will be fed to algorithms, programmed to guess your mood, reactions, and thoughts. We can imagine the nightmarish social applications. In public spaces, individuals with anxiety, for instance, might be analyzed by AI, which could send adverts for stress pills to their phones, while security guards are dispatched to detain the individual, suspecting them of plotting crimes. Any public performance by, for instance, a populist politician will see their every facial and bodily movement, scrutinized by behavioral AI in real time for the public to assess and judge. Mainstream media delivering the given political debate will rank the confidence and calmness of the favored candidate higher than those of the underdog, shattering voter confidence in the populist. The present is already grim enough. Generation Z and the maturing Generation Alpha were born and are being born into a connected world, never knowing a moment of being offline or having to wait for gratification. Early so-called social media appealed to users' egos, YouTube, MySpace. But they also played on our need, as humans, to be part of communities. Social media liberated the individual from the physical and restricting geography of their dwellings, but also from their cultures. The lonely and misunderstood teen could find the kinds of like-minded people online that they could not at school or in their hometown. The niche hobbyist could do likewise. The conformist could post about themselves to receive validation from fellow conformists. But users initially had no clue that their habits, connections, thoughts, interests, and posts were being harvested for profit. They had no idea that the military intelligence complex was also hoovering up their data to build character profiles and engineer society. Pretty soon, users entered carefully crafted filter bubbles in which ever-increasing niche trends of favored sites, products, friends and personalities would play up to those traits to attract more users to the bubble. Behind the scenes, social media companies worked with cognitive psychologists to devise ways of keeping users addicted to their devices by simple reward-based conditioning, a dopamine hit from getting likes, a serotonin rise from checking inboxes, etc. What do you think? What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.